Hey everyone, this is Garrett again, and this is episode two of the SimTune Tutorials video series. And if you remember, episode one was an overview of SimTune, so if you haven't watched that video yet and you're not sure what SimTune is, go and check that out first. Episode two, we're going to be talking about the core of SimTune, which the simulation modules. Uh, that's really what it started out as, and that library began to grow, and more tools uh, kind of were added to, to complement the simulation modules. So we'll be talking about the process parameters, the PID controller settings, uh, the general controls in the interface itself, and then also how to make the, uh, the simulations a little bit more challenging with disturbances and with additional settings. So let's go over to SimTune. And once again, we've got our, our first module in the library our simple flow simulation and once again you can get to the full library here and we can see here we've got a simple flow being simulated so we've got a flow being controlled by a control valve and we've got our PID controller to manipulate that valve and if we click begin simulation we can see our uh, simulation starts running green is our in this case it's our controller set point so it's trying to get that flow up to the controller's set point. Uh, blue is our flow, and red is our controller output, the, the command going to the control valve. Uh, so it's manipulating the position of that valve, and we can see that it's not tuned very well. Uh, in fact, we can speed up the simulation. And we can see it's really just missing that set point there. So if you want to change the simulated process, you can change the model parameters here, and in this case, it's a first order plus dead time model. So if you don't know what that is, you can look it up in the SimTune user manual. Just search for FOPDT. And uh, that's one of the great things about SimTune is you can adjust the uh, simulated process. So let's say we wanted this flow to be a lot faster, a lot more like just kind of a generic flow. Uh, we, we could change this gain to like five, but really the lag time is what we want to change. And let's change that to three and the dead time to like one or maybe 0.5. And then we click create process and it loads in the new model and we click begin new simulation. And as you can see, the simulated process is way different from where we started. And that would require different tuning parameters so that's how you can adjust your process parameters. Now for the controller, if we click this button here, it brings up this window and you can change your equation that you're using. And if you do that, it changes, it, it shows you what the form is that you selected. And you can also come to this tab and it explains more about it because you really need to know what your controller algorithm is to really be able to um, try to configure the controller to work correctly. And then we also have a few additional parameters down here that you can include. These are pretty basic, but very important um, configurations to understand how to use, especially the controller action, the PV tracking, and then also uh, learning how to use an adaptive gain. So here, this is um, just a quick view is what I kind of call it, the quick tuning view. So you can change your tuning parameters without having to go to that configuration window. And uh, I mean, we're kind of at set point, so I can't really, I guess I can make it go unstable. There we go. So we just went unstable, bring it back, and now it's coming back. And this is really our faceplate, so we can also change the set point here. We can also throw it into manual so that the controller's not doing anything. We're actually t telling the control valve what to do manually, okay? Then moving on uh, to the different controls that are built in, we've got the like the speed I showed you. You can also change how many plots are shown, uh, the size of the plots. Uh, you can also look at the lines that are being used in the plot. Uh, so I knew that blue was the flow, green was the set point, red was the controller output. Uh, with the other modules, it gets a little bit more complex because we're adding more lines, more things are being uh, simulated. And so definitely check out the legend to see what those are. And you can also adjust different things, like maybe you don't want to see, well, you would want to see the flow. But with other things, you can change the visibility, you can highlight things, you can change the color, 
you can also change the plot, uh, cool things like that. And then we'll hide that again to make more room. You can pause and resume, obviously. And then also you can change how much data is displayed. Okay, so we just kind of panned out so we can see more. We can also zoom in. We can record our data. So let's once again make a change to this. Go back to 60. Let's speed up. Oh, I can't speed it up because I'm recording, so it locked my speed. But um, now that I'm recording, once I click this, a historical trend will open up after I've stopped recording and it's got my recorded data. So it records from when you start recording to when you stop recording. It doesn't kind of go back and retroactively, retroactively record, uh, but that's a good tool for being able to save this file, this simulation data to an external file. Let's talk about the disturbances. Uh, if we continue this and we can speed it up again, let's speed it up. You can, you've got two different ways to add disturbances. You can do it manually like this. So you can see our process value, our flow is being adjusted. And so this is kind of a good way to test your uh, PID tuning. In fact, if we throw it in auto, uh, we can see what our controller is trying to do to bring it back to set point. Another way to do it is with these disturbances right here. It's like a disturbance generator and you configure a signal that it will use to superimpose a disturbance onto your process. So if we click update, we can see a pro uh, something's going on. And you can see your controller's trying to adjust and bring your process back to set point. You can also save your trend if you, uh, for example, if this is for an assignment, you can use that. Um, but yeah, those are the disturbances. And then the last thing we wanted to talk about was the advanced settings. And, uh, or advanced options. Uh, currently we've got just one option, the valve flow profile. Uh, so if you want to add a little difficulty to this, just throw in that it's a butterfly valve. And this is going to use uh, the inherent characteristic of a butterfly valve, not the installed characteristic. Uh, if you understand the difference between the two, you'd probably understand why we would choose inherent instead of installed. But as you can see, um, our controller is not doing nearly as well. And that's because we changed the relationship between our valve and the flow going through it. So that's the simulation module in a nutshell and how to use it. And hopefully in the future we'll be able to do another video like this, but really dig deeper into how we use it and how we use it to, uh, to practice tuning PID controllers and really test our limits. So thanks for watching this video. Next video is going to be on the I.O. modules and how to use that. So we hope you stick around for that. Thanks.